use the second weapon, he'll just strike with the second weapon and, you know, it'll be a hammer, mace, axe, sword, knife, whatever, but he will just hit with it, you know. If they had put, like, a stun function there, that might have been useful. I mean, in the sense of time, if you hit the secondary attack key, it will you the prince will use the dagger of time. That will suck up the sands of an enemy if he's lying down and hasn't gone too far in his resurrection yet. Or it'll stab an enemy, which will make them s move very, very slowly for the next couple of seconds, and you then have to chop at them twice. The second chop having the prince launch himself into the air and slicing the enemy in half, and then he'll be gone already, you know, he won't fall down and then start to resurrect himself if you don't suck him up into the dagger. And yes, on occasion it does mess up and accidentally do the slow down attack to an enemy when you meant to sand suck a downed enemy. But not terribly often. And again, it was at least always useful. For a little of this game, you will be helped by Kylina, who soon after you find her, you discover to have some of the greenest eyes you will ever see on a video game character. And last, but definitely not least, unless we're going by game length, in which case it's definitely least, The Two Thrones. As the trip to the island of time was a success, the prince journeys home with Kylina by his side. When he comes to Babylon, however, he instantly realizes something is very wrong. The city is clearly under attack. Within moments of realizing this, their ship is destroyed, Kylina is captured, and the prince begins to make his way towards the palace to find out what's going on. Once inside of the palace, he realizes that this is his old enemy, the vizier, the Maharaja's vizier. Zervan, as we now find out he is called. Not entirely sure when we find it out, but the people in this game know, including the prince. Don't know who told him or when, but whatever. Zervan has Kylina killed, thus unleashing the sands of time. This transforms all of his forces, but for some reason not anybody else, even though they, unlike Sands of Time, did not have any protective magical items on them. I mean, seriously, you rescued plenty of your own people in this game. Anyway, he also stabs himself with the Dagger of Time, thus transforming himself into something pretty silly looking. However, the prince gets the dagger and gets away. However, he had been hit with a sharp chain on his arm, and somehow the sands seem to have partially infected him. As he makes his way through Babylon, he on occasion now transforms into his darker half, a personification of the rage left over from all those years of running from the Dahaka. His darker half also talks to him, giving him tips. He's also joined once again by Farah, who's quite different from the last time we saw her. All of this is of course possible because the events in Sands of Time never happened. One of the things different about Farah is that she and to some extent Kylina mark the first time in this trilogy where the female characters aren't all wearing so little clothing that one has to start pondering if they are in fact at all wearing clothing. With that said, Farah, when you put on your pants this morning, did you notice that the seamstress had maybe forgotten that you do have two legs? So throughout this game, you will on occasion transform into the darker half. The darker half is a stronger fighter, and that's fortunate because his life drains gradually over time. He's healed by sands of time. Water actually returns the prince to his normal form, and the darker half has, in lieu of a secondary weapon, he can't pick up any secondary weapons, he uses 
this sort of manifestation of the sharp chain that he had been hit with. He has this weapon called the Dagger Tail, which he can swing and attack enemies with. He can also use it as a sort of grappling hook, so if he's wall running and he can't quite wall run any further, you just have to press the secondary attack key, he'll swing by the force of the lamp and be able to wall run further. Also, if there are lamps hanging and he can't quite make a far jump, he again has to use it as a grappling hook to swing over to the other side. Fights again degenerate into spamming the most powerful attacks, but overall the combat is less of a nuisance than it was in Warrior Within. At points there is too much of it though. One really great new feature is the speed kills. The Darker can use his dagger tail to speed kill. If he's hanging upside down from a chain, he can swing it down and grab around the neck of an enemy and keep going until he breaks their neck. Or if he's just behind them, he will swing it around their neck and kind of strangle them with it. And the prince in his normal form can also take out the enemies which are again, which are now again tough and big if he successfully completes a speed kill. Basically you enter this sort of set combat progression where to ensure that you win you have to press the attack key at the specific moments where you're prompted to do so. You get, I think, maybe around a second of slowed down time to hit the key. If you do it too early or too late, the enemy will counter and you'll have to fight them regularly, unless you rewind time. You can on occasion even pull off multiple speed kills, so you can kill several enemies, maybe even all the ones in the immediate area, let's say th two or three, without engaging in regular combat. However, you can't really tell if you're going to enter multiple speed kill combat or just regular speed kill combat. I do think they could have done a little bit better on that. This is a great feature and really helps this from getting stale because it's still the same overall gameplay as the other two. This adds a ton of new stuff in general. There are new traps, new moves. In fact, there's very little left over from the first two other than the essence, the gameplay. Some of the moves, I think they were maybe channeling S Splinter Cell a little bit much. You can do the split jump, and as I mentioned before, you can crawl up and down chains and hang upside down from a chain and then attack from there. And the speed kill actually requires you to not have been spotted by an enemy, so you kind of have to be a little stealthy but you can't tell him to sneak. The prince will sort of sneak on its own if he's near an enemy and he hasn't been spotted yet. Still, it works out great and it's a lot of fun. The music is now a little bit too much just the Persian. They, they kind of went a little bit too much away from the rock music. New traps include this half moon sort of spike saw that'll appear on the floor, on walls, and you have to walk over it or wall run past it when in the split second where no part of the saw is on the spot where you're running. There are these wooden things that are flat on one side and on the other side they're round and spikes come out. And there are also traps that fire arrows and this one you can also actually move from one bar to the one above it without having to jump off a wall and onto it. I don't know, to me it just makes so much sense that you can do that. Actually on this most recent playthrough I kept waiting to be able to do that and then when I played the Two Thrones I realized, oh, it's not until this one you can do it. This one adds way more than the Warrior Within did. The main enemies are Saros army and he has two basic main warriors, or types of warriors. Ones with a sword, a mace, or something like that, 